Hi guys, Olive here, here today with one of my most exciting videos of the entire year. In today's video, I'd like to share with you my top 10 nonfiction reads of 2019. This has been the strongest nonfiction reading year that I have ever had. Believe me when I say that narrowing down this list to just 10 books was agony. I could have comfortably doubled this list. So you know that these 10 books really are the best of the best. I am so excited to tell you all about them. But before I do so, I want to let you know just a couple of things very quickly. The first thing is that these books are ranked, and I will be talking about them in descending order. So I'm going to start with my 10th favorite, working my way up to my number one favorite of the year. And the second note is that, per usual, these are the top books that I read in the calendar year 2019. They weren't necessarily published in 2019, although quite a few of them were this year. I am far too excited to wait any longer, so let's start talking about the books in the number 10 spot is an early favorite of the year, and that book is Why We Sleep, Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams by Matthew Walker. This is an extremely in-depth look at sleep and what scientists currently understand about it, which is still probably only scratching the surface. While this is not a self-help book to get you sleeping better, it definitely will, through the science, help you understand some do's and don'ts about catching those Z's, and you will certainly realize how important it is to get them after reading this. I thought this book was so well done. It is very scientific, but all of it's delivered in a very engaging, readable way. It is anything but a snooze, trust me. I think about this book all the time. I altered my living patterns according to it, and I will recommend it to pretty much anyone who will listen to me. I also did a full video review of this book here on this channel, and I will link that down below for you if you're interested in learning more about it. My ninth favorite nonfiction book of the year is The Good Neighbor, The Life and Work of Fred Rogers by Maxwell King. This is an astutely researched and lovingly done biography of Fred Rogers, beloved host of the children's television show Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. This book gives you a real sense of who he was as a person, how disciplined and, of course, how kind he was. If you love the man, if you loved his show, you must read this book. It will make you love him all the more. I actually did a video review of this book alongside the new Tom Hanks movie, and I will put a link to that video down in the description box below in case you need some more Mr. Rogers content in your life. At number eight is how to Catch a Mole, Wisdom from a Life Lived in Nature by Mark Hammer. This is a gorgeous piece of nature writing written by a man who spent many years of his life working as a mole catcher, which is a very solitary position and one that gave him far too much time by himself to think about the endless nature of his job. By the end of this book, he wants to leave the profession, and you will understand that choice if you go on this journey with him. He mirrors so much of his own life with the observations of nature, and he concludes every single section of this book with a beautiful poem. This book is simple but profound. The seventh spot belongs to Strapless, John Singer Sargent and the Fall of Madame X by Deborah Davis. This is one of those books that had me downright obsessed with it, both during and after the reading experience. It is all about a particular portrait of an American-born socialite living in Paris during the 19th century, and the portrait of her was done by the one and only John Singer Sargent. One singular artistic choice he made in the portrait had attendees of the Paris Salon scandalized and cast a stain upon his rising star. This book is Sargent's story. It's the socialite story. It's the full history of this painting. And also, it's a portrait of Paris during this very specific window of time. It is thorough, it is insightful, and it's a gas. Number six on this list is Saving Jemima, Life and Love with a Hard Luck J by Julie Zickfuss. In this book, wildlife rehabilitator Julie Zickfuss gains custody of an orphaned baby blue jay and decides to nurse it to a releasable state. But considering that jays are corvids, meaning cousins to the infamously intelligent magpies, crows, and ravens, it was an experience with a capital E. But we come to find out that nursing this little jay, who she names Jemima, gave the author purpose, not just because of who the little bird was, but also because of everything that the author was going through at the time. This book was absolutely 
beautiful. Both the writing and all the artwork that the author does for it, she did this illustration on the cover just to give you an idea. As a bird lover, I could not get enough of this story. I wrote a very gushy review of it for Open Letters Review, and I will link that down below for you if you'd like more information about this book. Moving on to the cream of the crop, coming in at number five is Hammerhead, The Making of a Carpenter by Nina McLaughlin. This is the memoir of a former journalist who at her wit's end with her job decided to quit, and while she was searching for a new position, she stumbled upon a Craigslist ad for an apprentice to a carpenter. And despite not knowing anything about carpentry, she decided to apply and got the job. She not only gets a crash course in the basics of the job, but she also learns quite a bit about life as well. Each section of this book is named after a specific tool that she would use on the job, and she compares the function of that tool to a life lesson she learned along the way. There is so much wisdom within this book, and the author shows so much bravery. I have not been quiet about my love of this book this year, and I am not sorry about it. I am thrilled to get the chance to sing this book's praises. Another one I have not been quiet about out, takes the fourth spot on this list. That book is Rough Magic, Riding the World's Loneliest Horse Race by Laura Pryor Palmer. This is another memoir that tells the story of not only the youngest, but also the first female winner of the Mongol Derby, which is known as the world's most challenging horse race. Pryor Palmer was not even out of her teenage years when she spontaneously decided to sign up for this race that she was not at all prepared for. But somehow her flexibility and observational skills gave her the ability not only to compete seriously in this race, but also to write this extremely unique, vaguely dreamlike book about the experience. I was totally swept away by this memoir. It's one of the best of the subgenre that I have ever picked up. And if you would like to hear more about it, I did write a full review of this one for Open Letters, and I will link that for you down below. Speaking of spontaneity, coming in third is a book that I hosted a spur of the moment read-along for. That book is called Just Mercy, A Story of Justice and Redemption by Brian Stevenson. This is a book written by attorney Brian Stevenson, and it is all about his attempts to get prisoners off of death row, specifically in the state of Alabama. He speaks about many different people, many different cases in this book, but there is one case at the center of it all, in which a man accused of murder was clearly innocent, and yet there were countless roadblocks challenging any attempt to save his life. Brian Stevenson wrote this book to be accessible. It is very clear, and I think he definitely achieves that. And also, as you read this book, his humanity, his empathy, his determination will surround you. This book will break your heart over and over and over again with the injustices that it reveals, but I cannot imagine more important reading. My second favorite nonfiction book of 2019 is 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hamp. This is an epistolary work of nonfiction. It's composed of the majority of the written correspondence between a sassy American woman eager to get her hands on some works of English literature that she can't find in New York City, and a whole bunch of people affiliated with a bookshop in London that she asks to acquire these books for her. The relationship that develops between Helene and these Londoners over the years is so heartwarming as she sends them food packages during rationing since this takes place after World War II. And then they invite her to come across the pond, visit with them and stay in their homes. This book is warm and bookish and wiggles its way into your heart so fast. It totally broke my heart at the end, but I would willingly go through that again just to get the opportunity to read this for the first time once more. And finally, my favorite nonfiction book of 2019 is Maybe You Should Talk to Someone, A Therapist, Her Therapist, and Our Lives Revealed by Lori Gottlieb. Oh, this book. I didn't know it at the time, but it entered my life right when I needed its wisdom the most. It's all about how a therapist decides to go start seeing her own therapist after a sudden and devastating life change. She simultaneously talks about her journey going through therapy while also talking about her own work as a therapist, giving us a slow drip feed of her career progression up to this point. She also makes the entire book mimic a therapy session by giving us important pieces of information about herself, but then deliberately withholding others, much in the same way that patients do with their therapists, intentionally or not. This book is full of wisdom and grief, emotional barriers and breakthroughs, and all of the other things that make life so messy. This book has stuck with me in a way that no other book has this year. And for that, it's my favorite.
It so happens that I also did a video review of this one, which I'm very happy I did now. I will link that video for you down below if you would like to hear more about this book. There you have it, my best of the best nonfiction reads of 2019. As I said at the start of the video, it was incredibly difficult to pare this list down to 10 books. But I have to say, I am extremely happy with this list overall. I would love to hear from you if you've read any of these books, if you've heard of any of them, or if you're now interested in reading them after hearing me talk about them. You can put that or any other comments or questions you may have down in the comment section below. But if you'd prefer to find me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of those profiles are in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.